one thing that really attracts people to tech is the amount of money that you can make in tech. In today's video, I want to break down the traditional compensation that you can expect working in a larger tech company like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, and Google. None of the information that I'm sharing today should be much of a shocker, especially because all this information is already made public. I'm using Levels.fii, which is a great resource that compiles anonymized offers and lists them out for everyone to see, as well as a comparison of what different levels at different tech companies look like. I will just be focusing more on new grad compensation because that's where I have the most experience and familiarity with, but I do also want to take a look at the senior, principal, and beyond, and the overall compensation that's going on at that level. Hopefully that'll give you something to look forward to later on in your career as well. First things first is we have to define a couple things. What do I mean when I talk compensation? The first component of your compensation is going to be your base pay. Whether you're a salaried employee or hourly employee, you should still have a general expectation of how much money you're making in a year without any bells, whistles, or frills. Year after year, you should be expecting to get increases to your base pay due to inflation increases. Since inflation increases about 2% a year on average with the pandemic being an outlier, you should also be expecting at least 2% increases to your base pay to account for that increase in inflation. Otherwise, if your base pay stays stagnant, then you're losing money since the value of money is decreasing and you're getting paid the same exact amount. The next thing into your compensation is going to be a signing bonus. Most tech companies don't actually offer much of a signing bonus anymore and it's converted into a starting bonus, but we'll talk about that right after. A signing bonus is going to be the amount of money given to you for just simply accepting your offer and saying that you're going to be going to this company in the near future. For a company, this can be an incentive to help hire people since you get money off the bat just by signing. This can also be a little bit of a hassle on the company's end though because if candidates fall through and don't actually come to the company, then they have to expend resources and time to actually chasing down people and getting that signing bonus back. I don't really know what the range of actual signing bonuses look like. My best guess is going to be anywhere between $1,000 and $5,000 for a hefty signing bonus. But again, that'll all depend on the company and what they're willing to offer you, as well as what their shortage of labor looks like at that time. The next major aspect of compensation is going to be a starting bonus. This is the money that is given to you within your first paycheck after starting to a company. Depending on how large your signing bonus is, then it may be split across multiple years. At the low end, it can look something like $10,000 or $15,000 as a starting bonus, and on the high end, it can be anywhere up to $100,000 or even more if you're working at a really lucrative company. When we're looking at exorbitant starting bonuses like $100,000, that'll often be split up across multiple years, two or three years, to retain you at the company. Usually, if you leave after six months or so, you may have to return your starting bonus to that company, but if you stay for a year, then you'll keep that money you earn in year one, but lose out on years two and three. And that's how they incentivize you to stay at that company for just a little bit longer. The last major aspect of a big tech company offer is going to be stock grants. Stock grants come in the form of pure monetary values or restrictive stock units or RSUs. Similar to starting bonus and salary, when you go from new grad to principal to director, VP, the stock grant value will look dramatically different. On the lower end, on a monetary scale, that can be anywhere from 50000 and on the high end, that can be even up to a million dollars in stock. When it comes to determining how many shares of stock you actually get with that stock grant, that all depend on how your company calculates your strike date. Your strike date is going to be how many RSUs are given to you, so that is a direct number of shares, or if you're given a monetary value, that'll be the monetary value divided by the cost of the share on that day. Check for nuances of if it's the beginning of the day or the end of the day, but nevertheless, you'll be getting a hefty amount of shares through your stock grant. There's no overwhelming factor of why a company may offer RSUs versus a monetary stock grant, but overall, RSUs can be a little bit trickier because you're set to give an employee this number of stock regardless of what the price is, whereas with a monetary stock value, then that'll fluctuate depending on what the current stock price is. Those are gonna be the three or four main pillars of your compensation when it comes to working in tech. There's the base pay, a signing bonus potentially, a starting bonus, and stock. Now to wrap up our conversation about stock, it's also important to take into consideration stock vesting schedules. Each company will have their own schedule, but for example, Amazon's vesting schedule looks something like 5, 15, 40, 40. So in the first year of being at the company, you get 5% of your total stock vested. In the second year, you get 15. And in the third and fourth year, you get 40% respectively. A schedule like this is obviously very backloaded, which means most of your compensation will come within your third and fourth years at the company. And a more common vesting schedule may look something like 25, 25, 25, 25, where you just get 25% of your stock value vested each year you're at the company. 
If you've been paying close attention, then you can probably start to figure out that the sweet spot for staying at a tech company is going to be anywhere between two to four years. Two, because that's when study bonuses start to get paid out in full, and four, because that's when your stock will finally finish vesting. Conversations around total compensation get very toxic very fast, especially because people like to just brag about how much money they make on sites like Blind. But that said, let's figure out how you can calculate your TC. Let's work for a hypothetical example now and move on to an actual example later on. Let's say that my base salary is $100,000, I have a starting bonus of $20,000, and my stock grant is $100,000 over four years at 25% each year. This means that for the first four years, I can expect to get paid at least $100,000 with just my base salary. In that first year, I can get all my starting bonus, which adds an additional $20,000 to my total compensation in year one. Lastly, with my stock, since I get 25% of it vested each year, then that means I get $25,000 in stock added to my total compensation each year. So my first year, my total compensation will be $100,000 plus $20,000 plus $25,000 from that vest in stock. The second year, I have no starting bonus anymore, so it'll just be $100,000 plus my stock at $25,000. The same goes for year three and four. Once all the stock is uninvested, then you're commonly hear a term called the stock cliff or compensation cliff. You no longer have any uninvested money going in for you, so all you can really rely upon now is just the passive income from your stock vested and your base salary. A lot of people do go job hunting before that four year stock cliff or compensation cliff just to make sure they can really maximize how much money they're getting paid. I won't dive too much into bonuses and rewards, although refreshers do tie in here. Basically, with respect to annual rewards and bonuses, most tech companies offer somewhere between 10 to 20% of your base salary and use that to calculate what your bonus will be that year, depending on your performance. Part of the monetary value of the bonus that you're getting that year will also be calculated and put into a stock refresher. Essentially, a stock refresher is just that. It refreshes the amount of stock that is given to you to help retain you at the company and prevent that whole composition cliff from happening. So in years five, six, seven, eight, and beyond, you'll still have yearly stock vesting for you just not as at high of a rate as your initial offer in compensation would have been. So that was a real doozy talking about compensation and we haven't even dove in into actual numbers. Keep in mind that all of this can change depending on location, experience, and even if you're returning intern or not to the company as a new grad. The last note I wanna make before we dive into actual numbers is that a large tech companies, it's very established and granular. Starting out, you're probably be a software engineer one or a PM one just due to lack of experience, but some do start at software engineer two or PM two. This goes all the way up to senior, principal, distinguished, VP, and C-level executives. In addition to these titles, there are also levels that are a little bit more granular than just the title that you see externally. For example, at Microsoft, being a software engineer one is actually being either in L59 or L60, but at Google, you'll be in L3 for software engineer one, and at Facebook, it's called E3 for being a software engineer one. Again, this all changes depending on the company you're going to, so yeah. Thankfully, our friends over at Levels.fi have already done all that band correlation and levels adjustment for us, so it'll be pretty easy to compare across companies. Let's dive into some of these sample compensation packages. So let's look into what Google salaries look like. So after clicking into Google here, we can see that this is the average compensation that people are receiving. And if we scroll down, we can find the actual breakdown depending on where people are located. So just doing a quick comparison, you can see that New York, Mountain View, and Seattle are all gonna have slightly different compensations. Of course, this person also has an extra year of experience compared to these two. But we can also filter specifically for Seattle, Washington to get a little bit more concrete data that we can compare also a little bit better. Now let's look at what a senior engineer is making at Google. That's pretty high compared to the software engineer one level. So this is an average of 530,000 with salary being 189,000 or 190,000 stock being 130,000 per year and a bonus of about $40,000. You can see the total compensation here that is a lot higher than what we saw at the new grad level, almost double what the new grad salary is making in certain locations and areas. Now let's look at principal engineer, which is a shockingly high $940,000 in compensation. And this mostly breaks down to being a stock grant difference. Compared to the senior suite level at Google, the stock grant for a principal engineer is almost four times that value. And you can also see that the bonus starts to increase as well up to $120,000. Again, looking at some of these offers, you can see that it's pretty sky high, ranging up into the millions for a principal engineering spot at Google. 
Of course, if you go back to the original chart, we can see that being a principal engineer is pretty high at Google and is not going to be quite equivalent to being a principal engineer at Microsoft. And we can go ahead and compare Microsoft as well. So at the new grad level, the average compensation is 158,000 with the base salary of 111,000, stock grant of $30,000 per year, and an average bonus of $17,000. Again, you can see that most of the offers for Microsoft here are going to be in the Redmond range or Seattle range, which is gonna be a little bit lower than if we were looking solely at the San Francisco or Sunnyvale offices, just due to cost of labor and cost of living being a little bit higher over there in California. Let's do a quick check into senior, and we can see that the average compensation is $223,000. So the salary has grown a lot, jumping from new grad to senior, but the stock grant seems to be about the same offer-wise, and the bonus has also increased a little bit on average. Again, I think you'll find that this is a little bit lower in level and seniority than the Google senior engineer as well, which is why the compensation also looks a little bit lower. Now let's jump up to partner at L68, which is still a little bit lower than the principal engineer at Google, and you'll see that compensation is 724000 Again, salary has grown a decent amount, but the most obvious difference is in stock grant and also the bonus jumping up. Now, there's not much data at L69, which I think is the proper comparison when you're looking at Google principal engineers, but you can see that compensation is also in the millions and pretty high up there, but also consider the years of experience that people are having at that company and in total in their whole career as well. Just for the fun of it, let's finish off by looking at E7, which is going to be a little bit lower than the principal engineering spot at Google. You can see the estimate here being about $900,000, again, with an insanely large stock grant, which is $2 million over four years, and a slightly lower bonus and sizable salary. Really though, you'll start to see that salary starts to stagnate a little bit in terms of growth, and it really comes down to the stock grant to be the primary source of total compensation at these higher levels. I hope this helps to answer some of the questions that you have about tech companies and what you get paid working at a larger tech company. I'm trying to just stay as informative as possible, so if you have any other questions, please do leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next week for a brand new video. Bye.